Today in the Micro Shop, courtesy of Inventables, we bring you the truth about the X-Carve. months back, actually in the beginning of June, um, Michael Una from from Inventables contacted me by email, I guess, and offered me an X-Carve and thinking that it must be spam, I think I turfed it in the garbage can. And Fortunately, then, Michael Una emailed me back near the end of June and uh, was wondering if I was still interested. At that time, I took a good look at the email and went, what was I thinking or where was I at the beginning of June? Obviously, I was too busy with work. So, obviously, I took him up on the on the uh, offer. Um, almost a year ago, sometime just before last Christmas, uh, we were doing some Christmas shopping in Busy Bee Tools, and I was looking at a CNC carver at that time, and it was $5,000 for one that, that uh, had a work surface of 15 inches square. And I was watching it operate in Busy Bee, and I was fascinated by it, and I was really interested in getting one of these for myself. But at $5,000, I quickly said, there's a lot more things I can do with $5,000 than just that. Uh, but the interest never really left me. So when I heard from Mike Luna, I thought, yeah, you know, absolutely, I'm going to go for this, and I'm going to give it a shot. And in exchange for the machine, all I had to do was give an accurate and honest review. I'm going to cut to a few shots. We did an unboxing, and we uh, started assembly. And then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to tell you the truth about the X-Carve.
So after having seen uh, a couple of little clips and some photographs, um, there's no point me showing you uh, the entire assembly process or showing you how it works, even though there's a little bit of video in there about how it operates and sound level and that sort of thing. Um, I do have a few things to share with you about the x -Carp. Um, before we go too much further, I should probably tell you what I did order. I ordered the larger machine with the 23 NEMA stepper motors. I ordered the limit switches. I ordered the drag chain. I ordered the tools. And I ordered something else. Megan, what was it? The Acme thread? Did I oh, mention yeah. that? And the Acme thread. <laughs> If you're wondering why I ordered, I mean, my shop is 100 square feet. If you've seen any of my videos, you know this is a very small place. So why order the bigger machine? Well, because one of the things that I really would like to learn how to do in, in the future is I'd like to be able to uh, put intricate inlays into guitar, into guitar necks. And in order to do that, I can't really do that on a smaller machine. So that's why I ordered the larger machine. Uh, they were very good about having me order what I wanted. Uh, and if I were to do it again, I would not order the limit switches. Now the way that they have you tape up or put a zip tie on the um, that pulley, rubbery pulley thing. Uh, what do they call that, Megan? Uh, tra track. Track, was that what it, The rubber track thing. Uh, I've got one limit switch that won't actually tap out on the end anyway. So in the end, I didn't even bother wiring up the limit switches. They're all installed, but they're not wired. And you know what? It's I'm not missing them at all. Um, I wouldn't bother with the tools. If you're like me, I mean, most guys, I think, or most people, I think, that are going to get into this probably already have a shop. They already have tools, and my tools are far better than the ones that they came with. And there were tools that they should have come with that it didn't come with. So I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with the tools. Uh, if you have to go out and buy yourself a half-decent uh, Torx screwdriver to do the self-threading screws, that's not money wasted anyway. Um, and also, I sorry, I hate the clamps. I detest the clamps. And one of the good things about that is I have a 25-year-old roll of double stick tape that I finally, finally mm -hmm. used up. In my opinion, the drag chain is an absolute must. And I don't think you can go wrong with the upgrade for the motors either, because a little bit extra power wouldn't hurt. Uh, in terms of the instructions, uh, the instructions in some cases, well, the instructions in general, start with too much information, and I've noticed that the level of detail decreases as you go through, and by the time you get to the end, there's uh, not quite enough detail for things, in my opinion, like installing the computer boards, especially when that's one thing I have a phobia about. I just, the electronics thing scared the crap out of me. Every step is uh, has a suggested time, or I guess a, a time, a time amount of time that they expect that it's going to take, and they weren't too far off. Um, for example, uh, well, I'll just run through the list. The X carriage, and there's a lot of steps, a lot of steps. X carriage, they say, should take 60 minutes. Took me 75. The Y plates should take 30. It took me 90. But if I go down through the list. Everything was pretty much on par until I hit the wiring. The wiring they told me that should take 45 minutes. It took me 120 minutes. The work no. area should take 30. It took me 150 because they didn't include the strange sized uh, driver bit to install those little threaded inserts inside the workboard. Now, I don't know if it's a strange size or I didn't have the size or what. That's one thing, especially since in the videos or lots of videos I've seen, people are installing those inserts with a drill driver or a screwdriver. Um, that bit should be included with the kit and it was not. So we're doing, Megan and I did that all by hand and the two of us together, it took us 150 minutes. And aside from that, the electronics, uh, they said should take 45 minutes and it took me 210 minutes because I have a fear of electronics. Now not everybody's going to be in that position but I, electronics and me don't get along. The calibration drivers no problem but the machine setup was supposed to take five minutes. It took me 265 minutes but that's because I had to phone uh, for some help. In total uh, 
if you follow the ins what the instructions say, it should take 445 minutes or 7.5 hours to build the X-Carve. It took me 19.21 hours to build the X-Carve, and although I've heard of some people building the whole thing in one day, it took me weeks, because none of this includes all of the hours and time I spent reading and rereading the instructions and watching the videos to make sure that I didn't make a mistake. Um, if you're going to assemble one of these things, an extra pair of hands is a good idea. I had Megan to help me. Uh, Megan is uh, very mechanical and she was a, has much better eyesight than I do. In terms of the parts, I would like to, in my opinion, I would like to see, I mean, charge me a few bucks more, send me a few extra parts, a few extra T-nuts, a few extra of those little um, screw things and and whatnot. Uh, I. I don't know about anyone else, but I live in the middle of nowhere. The sheer distance and shipping problems that there are when shipping me something, uh, it, it would be a heck of a lot cheaper just to throw a few extra in like three or four. I, used, I started off with a little Windows-based netbook, which worked okay. I also tried my MacBook Pro that I use with the band program at school. So I'm back and at, I actually have a... Uh, IBM ThinkPad that I'm using now and it works flawlessly, but I will say I did have more trouble with the MacBook or with with an Apple product than what I did with uh, with a Windows product. Um, I did have trouble finding the right COM port though, and it turns out like if I contacted the customer service guy and uh, he was really good to deal with, and we found out that what happened was the G Shield, whatever the hell that is. The G Shield wasn't plugged all the way into the Arduino, whatever the hell that is, because I have absolutely no idea what any of this stuff means. So please don't send me email asking, because I have no idea. Um, and we did. He did manage to get that all figured out. He did it all for me remotely from the computer, and he was really great. And I appreciate that. And at this so, point, I was ready to get on here and complain bitterly about the X Carve, and because I had absolutely no fun whatsoever putting it together. The swearing and the frustrations necessitated frequent timeouts, unfortunately. Uh, and that that stretched my assembly time out quite a bit. Um, but I have to say, now that it's completed, I am having a blast using it. Uh, it's a big machine. I obviously don't have space for it in here. So for me, it's going to become a three season machine. I'm going to store it in a shed. If you're uh, interested in purchasing one of these machines, you need internet in your shop. But in now. my shop, the internet coverage is pretty spotty. I noticed um, that Scrapwood, the guy in Scrapwood City, he watched the videos while he was putting everything together. I wish I could have done that, but I couldn't. I didn't have the bandwidth. But my internet was good enough to allow John from Customer Support to fix my machine uh, remotely while I was out in the shop, and the internet was good enough to use the x -Carve. So I'm sure that uh, you've been sitting through all this waiting for what is the real truth about the x -Carve. On the positive uh, side, uh, the x -Carve is built from excellent quality materials. I mean, I can't fault them on the materials. The parts and fasteners are all top-notch. The support, top-notch. Uh, the easel software is really easy to use. It is uh, fairly basic and there's only certain things that it can do. Um, I mean, obviously it can do, this is the little, this is the little initial sign. I mean, I've done other uh, stuff like this, which I did on a piece of melamine. Can you see that, Megan? On here. Uh, and this sign, I designed this sign in, what was it, about three minutes? Yeah. I designed that in three minutes, and the, although the X-Carb took some time to carve it out, it isn't the fastest machine and on the planet. It's uh, addictive like that. I mean, anything I can think of now, I'm trying to find a piece of wood uh, to carve it into the piece of wood. The instructions are open source, so while I'd like to get on here and, and talk about, you know, all the things that I, about the instructions, like I have the same complaints that some of the other people have, is that there's nothing on there about the larger machine, it's all based on the smaller machine, and there's a lot of differences. But to be honest, I have to say that I can't really complain because I can go and edit the instructions myself. On the other hand, on the negative side, it is an assembly monster. It really is. Especially for guys like me. I am i don't build things out of metal. I'm a woodworker. All the so parts are small and black and hard 
for older, older guys like me to see. So I had a heck of a time with them. And I'm not sure you can, or I'm not sure the company can or would even want to change that, but if you're a little bit older like what I am and you're wearing like the bifocals and the trifocals, um, this may be a concern for you. If I knew then what I know now, I'm not sure I would have taken them up on their offer, uh, simply because things like electronics and that are, uh, I find them daunting. Uh, there are going to obviously be people out there that are way better at that stuff than I am, and that's great um, if you're not phased by that. But it's not really my thing. So basically the payoff from the machine is not immediate. Don't, don't buy one, expect you're going to be carving right away and having a great time. Um, the machine's also slow, but you can adjust that. Although I didn't have any fun putting it together, it was worth the effort, and I'm having a blast with the machine now. Um, it is a little on the slow side, and I do hand carve signs. But when I hand carve signs, I take the design and I route it out of the board first, and then I carve the relief in. Well, if the X carve can be operating in the background doing all the routing for me, then all I have to do is the hand carving. So in that in a, in that sense, the speed of the X carve is actually a bonus, and it's not. It's not actually a bad thing after all. Uh, a few other things that I have in mind is that uh, I'd like to take a piece of furniture and on the inside of one of the furniture parts have the X-Carve route a little sign with the date on it, sort of like a maker's mark, and I think that would be a great way to label a furniture project. Another thing the wife would like me to try is to carve uh, the contents and maybe little designs into uh, kitchen cabinet drawer fronts so that it's all labeled what's in each drawer but it's done so in a more of an artistic fashion and I still have part three of my pedal board journey where I want to make a road case for the pedal board and I want to personalize that road case with the X-Carve to do the designs on it and I think that it will do great at that. In the end I have to say thank you to Zach Kaplan and Michael Una of X-Carve uh, and the customer support people there, you were really great. Uh, I think that the X-Carve is going to be an excellent addition to my workshop. And I've really, really enjoyed using it. It's opened up a world of other possibilities that I might not have otherwise enjoyed. So if you're thinking about one, being able to do stuff like this is really cool. And although I found the X-Carve to be an assembly nightmare, I have to think back at uh, when I was standing in BZB looking at their machine that only could carve 15 inches square and they wanted $5,000 for it and compare that to the X-Carve where I can carve 30 inches square and I think the total price for what I asked for was about 1250 bucks. So uh, you're looking at a quarter of the price and twice the capacity and is the assembly worth that kind of savings? In my opinion, yes. What? <laughs>